welcome to my TED talk. Oh, it's not TED talk, okay. So, um, well, I'm like inspired to see so many people after the lunch. How are you? How do you like the conference? Yeah, after lunch, people. Nah, it's the best slot ever. Okay, so um, my name is Pavlo Golub. Um, I'm working as a senior consultant for Cybertech, but I prefer to think that I'm still young and handsome developer. Yeah. So um, if you want to find my social medias like Xitter or Instagram or Facebook, whatever, follow that link and you will find me. Uh, a couple of words about Cybertech. Blah, 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 you know, all of them, right? Because Hans already did during his keynote. <laughs> yeah, and we are hiring, yes, that's true. Um, some of our customers, choose your fighter. Uh, some of our products, please check them all. And um, this, is, this slide is not for you people because you are already here, right? You know why PostgreSQL. This slide is for people who will probably watch this talk recorded on YouTube or whatever. So our company is Postgres based. We can do whatever you want, any stack technologies, unless you have PostgreSQL as a database. That's our religion. Okay, so um, monitoring. Let's speak of different levels or different areas. How, how can we approach this topic? Uh, then we will uh, see what tools and extensions and whatever we have for PostgreSQL specifically. Um, then I will describe our PG Watch 2 monitoring solution, which is stable and, and is working and is like for, for years. And uh, at the end of the, my talk, if we will have enough time, I will try to show you the next major version of PG Watch, PG Watch 3. And of course, during live demo, I will fail and we all be glad. Okay, so different levels of monitoring. Why should we do this? What we are measuring? What is a metric? what are the best values, how we can use it, especially during this AI boom we have, like can we drop a, a lot of metrics to our chat GPT or whatever, and say like, what do you see here? Like a crystal ball. And he was like, increase your shared buffers. <laughs> or maybe it's just for nothing and we are fine. Our Postgres is running, it's rock solid. We don't need the monitoring. So I would divide like the, the monitoring approach to three levels. Like high level service availability, I mean base level, then monitoring of the operating system where we are running, and then specific PostgreSQL metrics and things. If you want to monitor like if we are running at all, yeah, it's simple, just try to ping the system, try to execute periodically some select one or whatever, or just a semicolon, you know, the, 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 the shortest SQL available and see what's, what's going on, if we're alive or not. Maybe you want to have like several such uh, jobs pinging all your database, but I mean, that's very like high level. System monitoring, we want to know what is going on on the operating system level. Uh, how many resources are we using? Do we have more? But I mean, we, we need to know what, what we are measuring. I mean, is CPU like 80%? Is it high or is it okay? Or memory, if we use all of it, is it bad or is it good? We don't know. And um, what about, uh, about PostgreSQL land? I would say that PostgreSQL itself is 
log-based. So every piece of most important information you will find in Postgres log first. So if you are trying to fix something, to find the reason what is broken or whatever, first examine your log and you will see information there. Then the next level is the statistics collector, which is built in into Postgres in form of uh, system views, etc. But uh, the main strength of Postgres is its extensibility. And here we have like a dozen of different extensions which may help you to know more about your server and about your lots. Uh, for log analysis, um, we have like a lot of things. You can, you can do it like from your shell, grabbing and finding, whatever. Um, we have um, like PG Pager is like probably standard de facto uh, nowadays. Um, PG Analyze is also working with uh, logs, so like you can choose. And yeah. So in uh, like two years ago, or maybe more, the Grafana Loki uh, released. So I didn't die it yet, but I, I think that it's like a, a good solution for, uh, for, for, for to work with logs. Um, but before you have something in your logs, you need to set up your server properly. Because default settings are like default settings. <laughs> so, and as you can see in the latest Postgres 16 version, we have 43 different options. How you can uh, control the amount of log, what you log, where you log, why you log. Um, statistics collector, uh, to, to use it like in full power, we need to set some uh, parameters to have more information, like track whatever, track IO, track fun, track all, whatever. And these, uh, in statistics collector, we have different kind of views. So one, uh, one of them are dynamic views, which shows us what is happening right now. How many active connections do we have? Uh, how many logs do we have at the moment? And cumulative views which um, show us uh, amount of whatever happens, sum and aggregated. And uh, if you want to find a problem in your system and you want to use a statistics collector for it, before you want to examine it, just reset your statistics and like run your usual load for a day or two, and then you can see the picture without old data. I told you about extensions, so the most famous now is PG Stat Statements, probably. Um, PG Stat Monitor by Percona is another one. Do we have someone from Percona here? Okay, thank you. Uh, PG stat, stat, uh, stat tuple, PG buffer cache, auto explain is very good, and many, many, many more. What about real life? Uh, we all people, and in real life we usually have like a mix of everything, because like someone fired and. We, we, and had this system, then we add something more, then we forgot to update, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> Let's talk about PostgreSQL monitoring specific tools. Yeah, there are a lot of them. I mean, usually you can find all of them in the wiki page, on the wiki page. And probably I missed some of them but let's try. Ad hoc troubleshooting. Uh, troubleshooting. What it is, uh, like, I mean, just imagine that you have a car, you started in the morning and you see like check engine on your dashboard. 
you go into garage and like a serviceman connects to your car and see what is going on right now and tries to fix it. That's like the same story here, but if you like own a truck or you're working for a logistic company, they are usually gather a lot of metrics about your truck and they can see, okay, we have a check engine, probably that was that bad fuel on that gas station, please avoid it in the future. That's the difference. So, um, <clears throat> like PG Activity, PG Center, PG Top, and PG Hero. <clears throat> no, I'm sure, uh, well, first three are uh, command line tools. Um, PG Admin, DBWare are not a monitoring or troubleshooting solution, but are like big GUI applications, by, but they do provide, they provide you with the like simplest um, dashboards, simplest graphs. So um, my favorite from the command line is PG Activity. So if you, want, if you want to monitor what is going on, to see what is going on in your system, that's the perfect one. It's not, not only about finding problems or whatever, Sometimes you want to see on what stage like complicated uh, workflow is on. So you see, okay, we have like that query, that's about like 30% of our 10 hours workflow. And that is PG admin. I believe that DP were, looks better, but PG admin is the official official <laughs> tool for process. What about, uh, what about continuous monitoring? We have a lot of commercial. Um, I mentioned already PG Analyze, um, for example, EDB Enterprise Manager, and, and so on. We have uh, some open source, but they mostly based on like, um, Check Postgres script or, or, or other derivative, derivatives. And we have Postgres specific tools like PG Hero, POVA. Well, the POVA team are authors and maintainers of such great extensions like PG Qual Stats, PG Stat K Cache, and PG Write Sampling. PG Clue, uh, PG StatWiz. Yesterday, uh, our Google Summer of Code student. Um, gave a talk about it. I suggest you to check the slides on the site. And a PG Watch, which is made by Cyber. So if we have so many different tools, why we need another one? Uh, yes, let's, let's see why we do. So first of all, I want to thank Carl Moppel, which is the author of the PG Watch 2. We worked with him like for five years in Cybertech. Uh, he did a lot of for, for the product, a lot of time and effort. Thank you, Carl. So I'm standing on the shoulders of giant. So the main principle how the PG Watch is different from other tools. So it should be one minute setup. So we, like Carl, <laughs> chose the Go language because we can produce one binary for every platform or every architecture we know, or we can put it like in Docker and run it right away. Users should have ability to change dashboards, panels, colors, whatever. It, 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 it shouldn't be like fixed. If the, the gatherer should be non-invasive. That means if you can if, if, avoid creating some objects in your database, avoid creating uh, functions. If you can operate without access to super user or whatever, do it, right? And the metrics should be easy, extensible. <clears throat> First of all, they are all SQL based. That means you are not dependent on maintainer or developer. If you have like specific needs for your load, you just change SQL, you change a metric, and you gather new data. 
or for example, if you want to monitor some specific flavor of PostgreSQL, like timescale or Citus or whatever, and we didn't provide you with the specific metrics, you can add them. And yeah, the um, frequent question about, do we have alerts? Alerting system is not a monitoring system. They're completely different. So we usually say if you want to send alerts, use Grafana for that. About architecture, so I said already, said already that we use Go language uh, to build our metric gathering daemon. Um, we can pass whatever, like uh, environment variables, uh, YAML configuration files, or the configuration uh, can be a, in another database, so there are like a lot of ways to configure and run your daemon. Then when we have our values, our metrics, we want to store them somewhere. Previously, we used InfluxDB for that. Um, why? Because uh, the first thought was, oh, that Influx was created for it, right? But then we measured the efficiency of PostgreSQL and Influx, and we didn't see any significant difference. And uh, as you probably know, the SQL in Postgres is like much more uh, rich compared to the uh, query language in Influx, InfluxDB. That's why we mark it as deprecated, but if you are still running InfluxDB somewhere and you want to use it, please. Um, uh, Prometheus, Graphite, and a local file. Why local file? Well, as I said, for example, if you want to push it to the AI for analysis. Or, for example, you may want to apply different retention policies. You want to keep the data like for one week in your database, but you want to keep a data like for a year, and then you can push your local file to S3, archive it, and store it there. Uh, also, we have like simplest web UI for administration. That way you can add more uh, monitor, monitor database dynamically or change some parameters of monitoring. And yes, by default for, for, for uh, dashboards and panels, uh, we suggest to use Grafana. It's like standard de facto, but if you have your own solution, you can do that because all metrics are stored in a database and you can that get them as a JSON or whatever you prefer and display them in, in different ways. That's how it looks. So this is our gatherer which have which reads configuration, then it stores metrics, and then Grafana reads the data from the storage and displays it. So as you see, the PG Watch 2 supports version from 9. That's a very old version. Don't use it. But the truth is that we have clients that still run such an old systems. That's why it's like still there. Okay, so um, features. As I said, it's like it's one binary and it's ready to go. You push configuration, you provide configuration, you start it and, and you're ready. Um, so um, if you have like in your uh, company or whatever environment, if you have already like Grafana or you have already uh, Influx running or Timescale or whatever, you can use that part. You, you don't need to start another one just be, be, because we do so. You can say in configuration that, okay, for that use this link, for that use this link. And of course, it's like Kubernetes, whatever, ready. 
<coughs> if um, some, um, we want to say, for example, if you have a lot of databases and you don't want to add them manually, you can specify one database, for example, Postgres or template one to connect to, and then discover all other database in this cluster. And they can be added automatically. And like the list will be updated every, I don't remember how, how many seconds, but in five minutes, for example. So if it's like dynamic environment, you don't need to constantly update the list of monitor the databases. They will update it automatically. Uh, we can change definition of objects, DML. So if you see that, oh, you usually we treat it as a warning. Like if you, if, you, if you monitor the table and you will see, okay, the definition of table changed, like someone executed alter column or whatever, okay, you can see it. We support uh, not only AWS, but like every possible cloud. Just for AWS, we have like some specific metrics. That's why it's mentioned here. Of course, we have metrics for poolers, PG pool and PG bouncer. So we can connect directly to the pooler and grab some internal statistics from the pooler itself, not only from the uh, database. Um, Patroni became like a standard de facto, like a HA solution for, for, for most of us. We support it and we support auto discovery of databases and clusters or, or nodes uh, from Patroni. So the PG Watch can connect to ETCD, for example, get the list of nodes, get the list of databases and add them automatically. Um, extensibility. <coughs> so, as I said before, you can change metrics, SQL of metrics in whatever way you like, but you can also add your custom metrics. For example, uh, if you have a boss which who, who like to see like amount of sales per quarter, you can add these metrics. It's not about system. It's just like a custom metrics and provide him with the dashboard to see all this information. And Grafana is like very good at all of this. You can change whatever you want. Yes, as I said, the uh, alerting is like another topic. Um, I consider it's not a, a, a part of monitoring area. You should like implement your own alerting solutions. Um, like there are some already products for that. Um, or you can use another, our product, PG Timetable, to monitor the situation. And it, uh, it has a uh, built-in function to send emails, but you can use whatever functionality or, or, or binary you want to, uh, to, 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 to send the alert. How people um, start or use the PG Watch? Well, usually it's easier if you want to try it's easier to start it with a Docker. That's the um, command line. Um, so the port number 3000 is for Grafana, and the port 8080 is for um, admin web UI. So you can skip the, the second one, but probably you want to, to, to keep the, the, the Grafana port to, to see what is going on inside. And the name of the container PG Watch 2 Postgres means that this is the PG Watch 2 based on Postgres. So the Postgres is used for storing your metrics. PG Watch 2, just PG Watch 2, is on influx historically. <laughs> we didn't change that because, like many um, deployments, already depend on that. And if you want to see how dashboards uh, look like. You don't need to install anything. You don't need to run anything. You can open the web browser and you can go to the demo, pgwatch.com. Here it is. And you can see 
all dashboards and everything available for you. So we are running like virtual machine with fake load, PG bench, sleep, whatever, to emu emu emulate some uh, loads. So this is like health check, which shows you which is green, which is red. But the thing is that uh, we have not a banner here that if you if you install the the, the PG watch and, and run it in, in your environment, please update these thresholds because for 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 some system it's okay to have like eighty uh, percent of CPU or for some system it's it's okay to have like low shared buffer hit percent percent percentage whatever it's it's up to you you need to set it in the way that it's like all green, and you are happy. And if you go here, you can find a lot of different other uh, dashboards on the database level, on the table level. Uh, for example, here we have um, stat statement stop, which by default shows you five slowest uh, queries, so uh, either slowest by the total runtime, that's probably should your be your target, right? Next, like slowest by average runtime, and uh, top by query calls, etc. Um, by default, we hide queries generated by PG Watch too. Just like. We consider them like a system calls, right? But some people are interested how much, um, not the damage, but how much load PG Watch itself adds to the, to, to, to the, to the workload. So if you're like, interested and want to see maybe how PG Watch uh, queries affect uh, load, you can set no, and then you will see all queries. So PG Watch queries are prefixed with a PG Watch, and you can say, oh, you can tell that, oh, okay. So, but right now we don't see any. That means that PG Watch is fine. Um, I told you about um, extensibility, and I want to share with you um, the uh, dashboards by Postgres.ei. Uh, Postgres.ei, if, if you know, is, is run by is running by um, Nikolai Samokhalov, um, and they decided to have at most ten dashboards, but very big, very huge, and and they decided that the the, the dashboards hierarchy should represent levels of how you approach to the monitoring. So <clears throat> on the first, they even like called it like. So every dashboard has the index prefix. So like the first level is a global uh, database overview. So you are looking at the cluster level, what is going on, like transactions, queries per second, whatever, active sessions, and so on and so on. This is very like long dashboard, so it's better to run it on huge flat screen. And then you have like database overview level, then stat statements, then table statistics, uh, index, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I mean, um, that tells us that, that that you can have like your own absolutely unique dashboards, and probably you may have only one of them if that is okay, and you can control what exactly metrics you are gathering. <clears throat> For example, if you don't need to know the CPU or like memory or whatever, just skip it. Just don't do it. We have like set of we have presets for for the for the so we have 91 metrics. Yes, and we somehow create a presets like exhaustive. We have all of them. Then full we have like 60 or something like that. So you can choose either you want to 
enable this, this, and this, or you can say, okay, I will use this preset, like full or exhaustive, and like all of them are running. Um, if you have any questions, maybe you can ask me while I'm here. So how to find these dashboards? Uh, they have a GitLab repo for that, Postgres AI PG Watch 2. So all dashboards are in this folder, Grafana dashboards, Postgres. They are just simple JSON files. You can copy paste them in Grafana and you, you can even have like the best of b both worlds, like our predefined and, 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 and dashboards from um, Postgres AI. Okay. Where were we? Okay, so everything worked. I don't need this screenshot. Let's return. So PG Watch 3. Uh, I plan to announce new major release today during this talk. But as usual, I didn't make it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's still available. It's publicly available. Available, just we are working on it. That means that some parameter names or some APIs, whatever, may change. But once we release it, everything will be rock solid. So yeah. How that happened, I said that Carl was the, was the author, is the author and, and maintainer of PG Watch. How did it come that I became an author, oh, maintainer? So, uh, how, many, how, many of us, uh, how many of you know this guy? Not many, not many, okay. How many of you heard about Pimp My Ride TV series? Oh, yeah, it's better, so yeah. Okay, and how many of you know uh, Hans Jugenschonik, my chief, my boss? Okay, maybe that will be better. <laughs> I will tell him that um, he is more famous than Exhibit. He will like it. Okay, so <laughs> the idea is that when Carl left the company, um, my boss decided that we need to find a new maintainer. And surprise, surprise, this young, handsome programmer knew the go. That was my mistake. So yeah, I decided let's rewrite everything. Why? Um, first of all, it's hard to maintain um, not your code base. It's hard to find places where I need to apply something to fix something. Then I found that I want to improve Grafana provisioning, then I found I want to improve that and that and that. And um, that was obvious that these changes are like very intrusive. So I decided not to, not to touch the stable PG Watch 2 version, instead fork and have a PG Watch 3 and to try to apply all these um, changes and see if it's worth it like at all. So um, my first target was like web UI. This is the old one, like simple HTML page with, without any styles or whatever. And the web UI is served by external Python script. So you need to maintain and go and Python, which like, <sighs> So we switch to the Go. Now the Go gatherer provides you with the web UI and, and gathering uh, functionality in one binary. That's what we want. Like now, um, every time Grafana released a major, uh, major update uh, for, like for, for Grafana, um, that was like a nightmare to, to update to, 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 to implement support for the new major version in, in the PG Watch 2 because of the way how dashboards 
uh, were provisioned. They were provisioned directly to the uh, system uh, database for Grafana. And if they changed anything, like you need to fix the script, uh, yes. Now we have by default the, the latest Grafana. So if you, if you will try the new version and you will see that in Docker Compose, the latest is by default. I don't care, it will work, I said so. Among other things, timescale DB as a metric storage is on by default. That means that you don't need to make any movement to use a timescale DB as a metric storage. It will work out of the box and it will apply compression out of the box. For example, my colleague Hans Asma, thank you, uh, made some experiments. For example, we see that 45 million rows, that means like six monitor databases for three months. So if we use like current storage schema and we apply time scale, so 70 gigabytes in the vanilla Postgres, if we use for that purpose time scale, so we from 70 gigabytes we have only eight. And the new upcoming feature, which is like the last feature before release, actually, will um, will store the metrics like seven times lower, like 11, 11 gigabytes. And if you apply, if you use time scale DB, it's even smaller way smaller. Why? Because right now we store metrics as a JSON B, uh, and some metrics might be huge. For example, if you uh, query the PGSI statements and you get the text of the, of the SQL, of course you can store it, yes, because you want to see what the query is, but I mean, it can be toasted in, well, yeah, it, it compressed not really well, et cetera, et cetera. But if you use like Y table with the, with the special columns for every possible metric value, then you have a great compression ratio. ratio. Um, another one is a parallel metric storages. So before that, like before implementing this feature, you need to run several PG Watch instances if you want to have uh, metrics at, at different places. Like I said, we want like for seven days in Postgres and we want like for, for forever in, in file. To implement that, we need to run, in PG Watch 2, we need to run two instances. In PG Watch 3, you can add unlimited number of uh, story of metric storages so on this on this um, on this screenshot, I'm using the Postgres metric storage. I'm using JSON storage, and we are using Prometheus for that. And you can add more. Um, one 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 more benefit of this. Uh, it's not yet implemented, but the idea is that you can have group of databases or group of metrics and you want to put these groups into different location. As I said, if we want to gather metric for our boss, it's probably not worth to, to, to put it in the same place where we store like uh, CPUs, uh, loads, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we can use like standalone database or Prometheus or whatever for that. And Docker images they become smaller uh, because before that, we have an ideology of put everything into Docker. That means Postgres, that means Grafana, that means Python, that means everything, and based on Ubuntu. So people can uh, just run it and everything works. Uh, now, we switch to the Docker Compose thing. So if you want to try it, anyway, if you have a Docker, you have a Docker Compose installed. And that way you can control, do you want to run this Grafana or you have your own? Do you want to, uh, I don't know, 
to store it in the in, in the time scale, or do you have your own server, or do you want to try Citus, or whatever? It's up to you. So as you, as you can see, uh, so before uh, our image was like 1.17 gigs, and and then we changed the name of the um, I changed the name of the Docker image uh, to indicate that this is not for like production use. This is demo of what you can achieve in one image. So if you want, if you want to install it in production, you, you better use like Docker Compose. Or if you want to run it for a day or two just to see what is going on, it's fine. Just yeah, no matter. Um, okay, so. Um, Oops. Uh, we have less than 10 minutes. If you have questions, maybe, or I can show you the, how Docker Compose looks like for PGWatch. Okay, so the idea is uh, in uh, Docker Compose, we, by default I set the timescale DB, but you can use Postgres or whatever. So uh, can you see it? It's okay? So um, we started with uh, trackings on functions on what I said. We want to PG statement, start statements to be enabled from the start. And then we check if it's ready or not. Then we have a Grafana latest, I told you so, which uh, that connects to our uh, Postgres or timescale or whatever and um, have, have its own um, uh, dashboards. So, here is the difference about provisioning. So before that, PG Watch 2 created these dashboards, like sending, to, sending queries to the database. Now we just put all of these JSONs and say, hey, Grafana, take them. And, and that's much like, easier. Then we have PG Watch service, which is like you can build from sources or uh, Later, when we'll, we will release it, will be available. And yeah, you can specify like con config, like a file or, 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 or whatever. So right now, probably I'm running something. Yeah. So this is how um, Docker Compose logs look like. So this, this arrow, this error is here for purpose. I was lazy to fix it, but that, 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 that means that uh, sometimes you can, uh, you can miss something. For, for here, for example, uh, we don't have PL Python installed in the Docker image. That's why we cannot measure CPU because like Postgres cannot provide you with the CPU information. He doesn't care on what operating system it's running, right? And yeah, so we can see that we are monitoring database name test and the metric name wall, and we get one row and we store it. Okay, or for example, we locks mode. We have eight rows with information about it. And the it looks like. Here. Oh, and one more thing about Docker Compose. So uh, we have special services like Docker Compose up PG Bench, which creates some load so you can see how things change in your dashboard. So if, if you will wait for, I don't know. Oh, okay, so we can see that like queries per second is growing. See? So. Yes. Okay, so. Um, that's probably 
let me check. Yes, I'm ready for questions. Um, first of all, thank you for the talk. Um, regarding PG Watch 3, um, do you have anything set up to be able to um, maybe consolidate data? Like, I'll give you a real use case that I have, is that I want to be able to retain um, a lot of data. Like, I, I want to be able to retain metrics that go as far as six months. Mm -hmm. But I'm not interested in the uh, minute per minute um, detail for data that is for metrics that are uh, six, five or six mm -hmm. months old. So, do you have anything that's in set up? So you want instead of like 100 rows, you want to have one row with yeah, the average yeah. that, value. That, that's something time scale does very well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, does PG Watch does, does the agent or anything that's running on the uh, um, the machine do so, it. Yeah, thank you for the question. It's a good one. Uh, so, since we are using Timescale DB, we use everything Timescale can provide. Uh, about retention and metrics, I, as I said, mm, now metrics stored as a JSONB. Um, um, but probably you can run like. Um, uh, your own scheduled uh, tasks to, 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 like, to, to compress, to, to recalculate and delete all retention. And like PG timetable is for that. We have no built-in functionality in PG Watch 3. It, it, it's very specific. It's cool, but it's very specific. But I mean, we have another tool that can help you with this. Thank you. Does PG Watch need to run on the same instance as the database? Thank you for the question. Monitor. It can, but it like it can it can run anywhere. So the idea is that one PG Watch instance can monitor like thousands of databases. Like yeah, it usually it, it has its like own separate environment where it can like connect to every monitor database and gather all statistics. Or like in Kubernetes, it's running in the sidecar. Yeah. Last question. Uh, the dashboards, they are only available for the um, time scale and Postgres, or can I also use them if I'm starting on uh, Prometheus or something else? Uh, yes, we have uh, we have we have separate dashboards for Influx, we have separate dashboards for Prometheus, and we have separate dashboards for Postgres flavors. Yeah, yeah, we do. And if you will create new dashboards, just create pull request. We will gladly accept it. Thank you so much.